welcome. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Tonight, number of deaths from cerebrospinal meningitis in the country rises to 328. National Center for Disease Control says efforts are on to check the spread. Another fuel scarcity looms as petrol tanker drivers threaten to embark on strike next Monday. Army announces arrests of Boko Haram spies as a wanted militant leader surrenders to the Nigerian troops. And landslide kills more than a hundred in Colombia, leaving many others injured. And on business news tonight, Channels Television listed among Nigerian companies topping list of Africa's fastest growing businesses in London Stock Exchange Group's latest report. And on sports news tonight, the Queen's Baton arrives in Nigeria as it continues its relay ahead of the 2018 Commonwealth Games in Australia. We we'll begin with health matters. 328 persons have died following the recent outbreak of cerebrospinal meningitis in parts of Nigeria. This is out of 2,524 suspected cases with 131 samples confirmed in the laboratory. So far, 16 states across Nigeria are said to have recorded suspected cases with the most affected being Zamfara, Sokoto, Kastina, Kebi and Niger states. This was confirmed by the Chief Executive Officer of the National Center for Disease Control, Dr. Chikeze Ikekeazu, who was a guest on our breakfast program, Sunrise. He said efforts are on to check the spread. We have about 2,524 cases across the country. About the uh, exactly 131 of those have been confirmed, laboratory confirmed for bacterial meningitis, and there have been 328 deaths. Now, the most affected states are Zamfara, Sokoto, Katsina, Kebi, and Niger states. Now, the outbreak actually started in Zamfara before it spread, and therefore the response is also uh, kicking off in, in Zamfara. In fact, we've been working very hard with the state governments, with the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, our mother ministry, the Ministry of Health, our partners, the World Health Organization, and UNICEF, to really get on top of this situation, and I think we're making good progress. However, it's important to know that there's a lot that people can still do in the short term to protect themselves. Now, uh, meningitis actually, um, bacterial meningitis affects the brain and the spinal cord, but it's actually transmitted through person-to-person -person, uh, contact, through coughing, sneezing, uh, living in crowded conditions. So, you know, the messages are the same. You know, you need to prepare, do careful uh, personal hygiene, wash your hands, and make sure if you can't avoid overcrowding, make sure your homes are well ventilated. And critically, especially if you live in the northwest, north central Nigeria, where this um, disease is circulating at the moment, ensure that once there are symptoms of neck stiffness, a sensitivity to sunlight, um, lethargy, so you're very tired and weak, please don't try and self medicate. The era of self medication is really over. Go to your healthcare provider. The earlier you get into the care pathway, the more likely you are to access the care you need. Antibiotics, a specific type of antibiotic, is, is, works for meningitis, especially if it's given early. These uh, antibiotics are free in public sector facilities. We are working with state governments to ensure that the adequate stocks, stock of uh, antibiotics across the affected states. In the meantime, the situation is said to be serious in Zamfara State, where no fewer than 80 people are said to have died from this disease. It was gathered that in Maru local government area, 24 people, including women and children, died three days after the infection. One teenager died today before being rushed to the hospital in Kaura local government area. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Suleiman Gumi, told journalists that over 500 others are unconscious in various hospitals, adding that the state is working with UNICEF to immunize residents. Meanwhile, the National Association of Medical Health Workers in the state has expressed concern over the non-challenged attitude of the government in handling this issue. 
the chairman of the union, Dr. Tijani Abubakar, who spoke to our correspondent, explained that there are neither vaccines nor drugs to help the victims, especially those living in villages and towns. And away from health matters, the tanker driver's arm of the Nigeria Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Lupeng, has threatened to withdraw its services on Monday, April the 3rd. The national president of Lupeng, Mr. Igwe Achese, who made this announcement in Lagos, says the grouse of the drivers include bad working conditions, welfare packages, amongst other matters. The seat of this inspection consider the inhumane the refusal of the National Association of Road Transport Owners, NATO, to commence negotiations with the union for the review of the expired collective bargaining agreement on the working condition of our tanker drivers, members PTD branch, after several appeals and even ultimatums. The CWC instruction therefore resolved to give full backing to the industrial action the members in the sector might decide to take with effect from Monday of April 2017. To avoid these pains and discomfort, the action might cause the CW session call on the federal government to urgently intervene and apprehend the unfortunate situation to enable NATO to meet its obligation to the tanker drivers. To security matters now, Nigerian troops have arrested spies suspected of carrying out surveillance on several villages in Bronu State for the Boko Haram group. According to the Director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Sani Usman, investigation shows that the spies were on a mission to facilitate possible attacks on the communities. One Bulama Matele, who confessed to being a member of a faction of the Boko Haram, surrendered himself to the troops and is currently undergoing further interrogation. The suspect, a high-profile terrorist, had been on the Nigerian Army's wanted list for Boko Haram terrorists. And still on security matters, the Nigerian army has dismissed reports that suspected Boko Haram terrorists attacked Puka in Bronu state and abducted 22 women. The army in a statement explained that Puka and its environs is heavily fortified and there has not been any security breach in the area. The Daily Mail had reported that 22 girls and women were abducted in raids in northeast Nigeria, stating that the first attack occurred on Thursday when the terrorists raided the village near Nigeria's border with Cameroon, kidnapping eight girls. Residents were quoted as saying that the Boko Haram fighters from Mamanu camp arrived in a pickup truck around 6 a.m. and seized the girls who were around 17 and below, and they fled into the bush. The second incident, outside the village of Dumbwa, close to Lake Chad, the militants were said to have killed a herdsman who tried to escape after refusing to pay protection money and took four women from his family. Meanwhile, the Nigerian military appears not to be resting on its oars as it continues to beef up its capacity to effectively tackle the Boko Haram menace. The Air Officer Commanding Training Command, Air Vice Marshal Christopher Okoye, told young officers in Kaduna State to demonstrate courage in the fight against terror. The officers were trained on counter-terrorism and base defense operations in Kaduna State. Let me remind the graduates that the leadership skills and values embodied in this course is only a foundation for your career. You will be required to avail yourself of the enormous opportunities available in the Nigerian Air Force to improve yourself further. Note that as military leaders, especially now your junior commanders, you will be required to demonstrate courage, dedication, and commitment at all times in order to introduce dynamism into the school curriculum the AOC Training Command was directed that a review of the curriculum should include counterterrorism and base defense concepts. This will equip you with the necessary skills and knowledge required to address the security challenges confronting our dear nation. It is in this regard that a lot of resources was invested in your training. I urge you, therefore, to bring to bear these skills and lessons acquired during the course as you carry out assigned tasks in the future. 
As you leave the training environment, you should be guided by the utmost sense of patriotism and avoid acts of misconduct that could tarnish the image and the reputation of the service. I implore you to be law abiding and respect the fundamental human rights of citizens in your dealing with the civil populace. Thus, you be promoting a cordial civil military relationship. Disposing medical waste is a challenge to many organizations that have one thing or the other to do with such materials in the country. In Delta State, the State University Teaching Hospital appears to have found a way out as it has received a machine for this purpose. The state government explains that the equipment is vital to keep the environment safe. According to the World Health Organization, 15% of wastes generated by healthcare activities are considered hazardous, which of course can be infectious, toxic or radioactive. For patients, it is bad, and people who are admitted with, if uh, you have soiled sheets and you, you do not do the normal um, infection control and so on, then there's a risk that if people come in for surgery, for instance, infection may take hold and their recovery may be longer and may even significantly worsen the situation that they came in with. This has become a great concern for health practitioners. To curb this menace, the Delta State University Teaching Hospital O'Hara is demonstrating the need to properly dispose of these medical wastes using a purpose feed incinerator donated recently. Here we are concentrating on the shafts, but that's the one that poses a lot more danger in the society if you just throw them like that. So what we do when we bring them from the clinic like you just saw, we, we, we put them in the burner here and burn them. Normally an operation takes about two hours. And the, the furnace temperature of this is between 1,900 degrees centigrade and 2,000 degrees centigrade. This means at that temperature, even plastic will burn to ash. So that is the essence. That is going to burn all the medical shards that can really cause problems. We burn them to ash before you finally dispose them. The state government sees the gesture as one that should stimulate other organizations and corporate entities to look in the direction of supporting government with the provision of public infrastructure. With this donation, obviously, it is a, it's a big partnership to the state and it will help to improve uh, waste management um, in another central location. By the time we get three or four, like he has promised to donate another one, if we get three or four or five located in different senatorial zones, it will obviously reduce uh, distribution time and uh, transportation uh, cycles. Preventing the spread of diseases is still a function of healthy practices. Healthcare waste management has proven to be one of those areas that requires increased attention. Bochi State appears not to be losing sleep over disposal issues. Instead, it's turning waste to wealth by converting them to raw materials for companies to produce a wide range of products. This next report examines the challenges and prospects of the state waste recycling plant set up in 2012. This building is housing the Bauchi State Waste Recycling Plant. The building is equipped with facilities to aid the recycling of polymer and plastic materials and ultimately engage the young people in the state. Awal Ahmed is a scavenger and over the years, he has been bringing his collections to the plant. He's paid 35 naira per kilogram, and that gives him 6,000 naira or more in one delivery. Ankara bunka so na sana am masara antang na kawaka already kulung to den de ye bia mumbu katuna den ye alena. Equipped with facilities that can turn the waste into some products like these pillows, the plant has the potential to go into manufacturing. It also carries out research. However, there are some challenges confronting the facility. The machine was bought from China, and uh, since we, we have very few uh, companies here in Bauchi, once we have breakdown of even a contactor, at times you have to ask the evil man to ask for it either in Kano or Lagos, and that will take you a day or two. And if you cannot operate without that, then you have to wait until when that contact contactor is available, you fix it, then you continue. The state government have built the facility to provide some earning for young people and women. 
but the challenges are hampering the efficiency of the plant. And the government says it is working to normalize the operations of the plant. In part two, after the break, applicants for the unified tertiary matriculation examination raise concerns over the difficulties in the registration process. That's in a moment. Join us again.